Hey guys, I'm Pablo Popovich. I'm here with uh, Sean Meager. He's one of my brown belts. He's gonna be helping me with this DVD. This new series is all about defending the guard. I'm gonna be showing how to behave in the guard, how to defend yourself, how to apply the sweeps. Mostly we're gonna be working on, on my half guard, the half guard that I created. It's totally different from everybody else. Uh, we've got the reverse half guard, and I've been doing a lot of that. We're gonna be transitioned from position to position. Everything is connected to each other. And uh, I have so many details that I want to pass it on to you guys to make sure you understand why you're doing things. Rather than sh just showing a move, I'm explaining why you're doing it and what kind of reaction you can expect from your opponent. And that's why I think this DVD is going to be really good. Just like my first series, the passing series, this, this DVD I think is going to be even better because uh, <clears throat> once you can you know, take all the information for both DVDs, you're completely going to blow up your mind. You're gonna have so much to, so much uh, uh, knowledge to, to improve your game that uh, uh, man, it's gonna really take your game to the next level. So I hope you guys enjoyed this DVD. Gave my best to give you guys the best. So uh, man, have a good time. All right, guys. So we're gonna start uh, this series with the half guard. Half guard is one of the most used positions nowadays in jiu-jitsu. It's a very important position. You have to understand how to behave in the half guard. And that's how I'm going to start this series, is explaining to you what the, a, a, a good position is, where you don't want to be, how you get yourself into trouble, and how to stay in good position so you can conserve energy and uh, effectively do your attacks. Okay. So what we're going to do, as I'm talking about the half guard, is first of all, Teach you how to lock your legs, okay? Top leg always going to be on top. That way you're stronger, you have a stronger grip. And I like to lock the legs just like I lock the guard. You know, my feet just like this. The reason why I do it like this is so that way I can move my knees back and forth. And I want to explain why I have to be able to move my knees. Because I want to keep this knee by the guy's chest to avoid him from putting the weight on me. But I don't want to keep it too low so he can't put the weight and scratch my legs, that way I get into trouble. Or, I don't want to open it too much to give him leverage to go inside my leg and stop passing my guard. So he has to be in a position where he cannot slam it down or he cannot get this arm in, okay? That's why you gotta be able to move this knee back and forth because as your opponent reacts, you're gonna have to react with him, okay? Our next position that I'm gonna talk about is you always got to be sideways, okay? So I'm going to turn sideways, so that way I'm always hiding this arm from being pummeled. When I mean pummel is when he gets underneath my arm, and if he does that, what he's going to happen is he's going to make me flat on the floor. Now, if I'm flat on the floor while doing the half guard, I'm in trouble. So I don't want that to happen. That's why I always got to be sideways. Now, let's turn a little bit. Uh, Let's talk about this position more deeply. Sure. So I'm sideways. Now try to go underneath to get the pommel. See, I'm not doing anything. I'm just in good position. Now if I switch my position a little bit, look how easy it is for him to pommel me. Okay. So you want to make sure you stay sideways. Keep your elbows in. Our next position is going to be your hand control. Where's your hand supposed to be? One hand supposed to be on the neck, always blocking the guy for putting the weight on you. See how I'm almost like choking him with the bone from my arm, forearm here? In the other hand, I'm going to control the wrist and keep this elbow in. Now, I'm here, I'm in good position. He can try to pass my guard. I can keep the weight off. Doesn't matter how much he weights. I'm always going to be in good position. I see guys sometimes they're on the outside controlling this arm. If I control this arm on the outside, he's going to pull me. That's why it's important to have good position with your hands, okay? Sometimes what I do too, is I use the double grip on the wrist. I get a real strong guy, he's breaking my grip on the wrist all the time, I just go double grip on him. Even with the double grip, try to pummel Sean, you still can get the pummel, you know? And even if the guy pummels you for a slight second, you can always re-pummel and go back into position. So what I want you to focus on half guard is, keep your foot locked, okay? Knees on the way, so you put in your knee right onto his chest, Keep him on weight, so that way if he puts the weight on you, you can't. You're not going to feel that much weight. So if the guy, I'm 190 right now, the guy weighs like 220, I can keep him away from me 
just by having the knee there. Okay. Second part is the control. You never want the guy to get your head. That's why we're holding the wrist here. He gets my head. Now he's going to pull himself in. He's going to make you flat. Once again, you don't want to be flat in this position. If I control the wrist, I'll get the head. Sean sure. can get the head. He breaks the grip. I re grip. Get it again. Okay. So this is how you're going to behave on the half guard. From here, we have a million moves. We can attack the guy, we can defend ourselves or whatever. But if you don't know how to initiate the half guard, you're going to be in deep, deep problem. Have problems here. Okay. So one more time. Legs, wrist, beat the hand on the neck, or you can have the double grip, you can go back and forth. Okay. Moving on, um, I'm going to give you guys an idea. This happens a lot on the half guard, and you got to be prepared for this. It's a really easy move, okay? Sometimes you hear Jiu Jitsu is like a chess match. Sometimes you make mistakes, sometimes the opponent is ahead of you, two seconds, three seconds, you make a mistake. You got to be able to recover, and I want you guys to expect this. That's why I'm going to show this to you right now. Let's say you're in good position here, he does get the pommel. He does put the weight on you, he gets over the knee. Not a problem. Everybody see how I'm still controlling the wrist here? I didn't lose the wrist, because if I lose the wrist, now he's gonna get my head. And then I'm gonna be in real trouble. So let's turn around. Oh, show up real quick. So I'm here with the guy. He does get the pommel, gets over the knee, now I'm flat, okay? What I'm gonna do now, it's a quickly I'm gonna reset the position. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my foot on the floor. I'll make a bridge. As I make a bridge, look how I come back with this arm all the way around to the neck. And as I do that, look at my knee coming in. And I'll reset the whole position. So you don't need, you don't need to get desperate if the guy does get underneath the arm because you have this uh, uh, defense here. You definitely don't want that guy doing that all the time, you know, but even with me sometimes does, that happens. So I want to show this to you guys. So if I'm here, for some reason he does get the pommel and you get to this position, you cannot let go of this wrist, okay? So here what you want to do is foot on the floor, make that bridge and right away bring this elbow like you almost like a knife coming into his neck. Let's turn this way a little bit. You think I see this? Look at my arm, how my arm comes around. So I'm here. He gets the pommel. He's putting the weight on me. Okay? So I make the bridge to create the space. Now look at the elbow coming in. Right into his throat. Now I sneak the knee in and I'll reset the position. Okay? So one more time. So I'm here, pommels. I'll reset. guys another situation could happen on the half guard and the reason why I'm covering this even before I start showing the attacks is to me uh, uh, the best way to learn jiu-jitsu is to learn how to behave in the positions what you know expect what the guy is gonna do to you and then it's gonna be easier for you to react you know you're always gonna be two seconds ahead if you're expecting everything so if I know every move that he's gonna do I'm gonna be two seconds ahead and I'll be able to react quicker and it's gonna be much easier for me to defend myself and to attack the guy okay so we're gonna talk about another position could happen here is I'm in the half okay I made a mistake or he's doing good he's got a good game and he goes and get this arm inside my leg boom okay so what we're gonna do now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna open my legs. You know, it's hard to maintain that half here because if I stay in this position here, he can easily break my grip and he, start, he can start using to pass my guard. So what I wanna do now is, I wanna get this knee onto his shoulder. How am I gonna do that? I'm gonna place my foot on the floor, escape my hips, and I'll put that knee right onto his shoulder here. Okay? Now, Sean, try to, to pass coming this way he cannot pass he cannot do anything and what I'm gonna do is all I'm gonna do is rotate my leg secure his wrist rotate my leg 
and I'll reset the half guard one more time. So we go back to our initial position right there. Okay? So if you make a mistake or the guy just, you know, he had a good move, he got inside your legs, not a problem as long as you know how to defend yourself. Place the foot on the floor right off the back. Escape your hips. Get that knee on the shoulder. Okay? If I don't put that knee on the shoulder, what's going to happen is he's going to put this leg onto his shoulder here and then he could step back to a passing knee. This way. That's why you got to turn that knee. Okay? So as soon as he comes in, escape your hips, get the knee there. Now he tries to come in on the leg. See how he cannot place the leg on the shoulder anymore. And it's easy for me to just roll the leg back in. Reset the half, um, back on the half row. Okay? So let's do one more time, Sean. So if he does get inside right away, I turn that knee. If they got, if you feel like you cannot rotate the leg because he's putting too much weight on you, one more time, you can use the hand to push him away right on the, his neck. Okay? See how much space I'm creating? So he had his neck down, he was putting the weight. Come here. Now I'll skate my hips even more. Now get that rotation. Controlling the wrist. The reason why I like to control this wrist is I don't want to be rotating my leg and then he switches for something else or even go back inside again. That's why before I even rotate the leg, I'm already controlling that wrist right there. So I'm controlling both wrists right now. Okay? Now I can escape my hips. Now look, I'm back in. I'll go back to half. guys another situation could happen and uh, easily to defend is if the guy gets a hold of your head okay so what we're gonna do let's do this angle here sure um, I'm here with the guy this usually happens with me when I'm, I'm fighting against bigger lar larger guys you know they're much taller than me and they have longer reach so I'm here with the guy he breaks the grip and he gets my head boom if he gets a hold of my head well, hold my hand strong. What I want you guys to do is go back with this hand in. See how I'm coming in? Almost like you come in your, your head, your hair here, right here. And what I want you to do, use that feet on the floor, just like we used before, create the bridge, create some space, and gain control of the wrist, and get that hand out of your head. Because once again, if he gets your head here, he can use this leverage to pull himself into you and gain position. So you don't want that to happen. So anytime he gets your head, you gotta get rid of it. Easy way, easiest way to do it, go in. See how my hand is here? Now from here, I can push on his biceps and then slide down the arm and regain control of the wrist and reset the position, okay? So this is another situation. I'm covering all the bases for you guys so you know what to expect on the half guard, okay? So before we move on to any attacks, or anything, you need to understand those positions, what could happen here, okay? So once he gets the head, don't try to push him away. That's what most people do, they try to bridge the guy. He's, he has already his weight on top of you. If he pulls himself into you and you try to bridge, you're just gonna bench press yourself and kill your stamina, kill your wind because you're using too much power. You don't wanna do that. You, don't, you wanna use technique. So he gets his hand in, no problem. Get the hand in. If you need to use the bridge, use the bridge. Go back to your uh, uh, neutral position. Then from here, you can start defending yourself on the half guard again. Okay? So it's very simple. He gets the head, get in. Biceps, wrist, reset. Okay? basis of how to behave on the half guard now I'm ready to show you guys how to do our, our first half guard sweep um, over the years I modified the, the half guard sweep uh, for a couple reasons and I'm gonna go walk you guys through it as I do it the reason why I did it is I train with so many different guys 
that uh, uh, let's say I'm doing my half car sweep and the guy goes for a Kimura, I know I can I gotta modify that that sweep and I'm giving you guys a shortcut of all the years I've been training Jiu Jitsu and how I develop my half guard to, into a position where I don't put myself into danger and I can effectively uh, sweep the guy. So what we're gonna do is, like I said, I got my controls. I'm in set up position. First thing I wanna do is I wanna gain control of this leg, okay? Now a lot of people, what they're trying to do is they're trying to go into deep half, but they're trying to gain control too deep. The way I do it is, all I need to do is get a tiny bit of my hand inside the leg. Because how I'm gonna bring the guy in to bring him to deep half is completely different from what everybody else is doing. What I do here is, I'll switch this hand to the rib cage, and as I do that, look how I open my legs, and I'll place this knee right into Sean's shoulder, and I'll keep this hand on the rib cage, just like so. So if I'm here, I go one, two. So here, I'm controlling the guy. He lets me get a hold of the leg. I open this knee up. The reason why I open this knee up, pay attention to how I'm gonna bring him over. I'm gonna open this knee, pointing down to the ground, and that's what's gonna bring him over. Look at that. Now I gotta bring this leg all the way in and to my shoulder. That's the deep half. And what I do with my legs here, let's turn this way, Sean. In this case, I'll lock the triangle. Bottom leg, it's gonna be the leg locking the triangle. And I want you guys to lock this leg as high as you can. And the reason why I do this is to limit his mobility on top of me. Okay? Tell them the difference, Sean. The higher see? up you are, I can't get my knee. Yeah, my knee's too low. low. See, see, the guy's all over the place. Now, the control, I see a lot of mistakes with this here. Guys want to keep this leg on the arm on the biceps. If you keep it on the biceps, he can sprawl on you and get this leg out of the way. And then you're gonna be in trouble because as soon as he sprawls, he's gonna cross face you. Now look where you at. Exactly where you don't wanna be. You don't want the guy gaining control of your, your head and you don't wanna be flat. So, as you bring him in, another detail I do is I lock hand with hand. The reason why I do this is all my guys do kimuras from half guard because I do a lot of kimuras from half guard. So I want to hide my arms and I want to gain control of this like real tight. So if Sean try to move here, he can go anywhere. Okay? So I'm going to redo the move one more time. Okay? I start this way. Let's set up with the hand. So I'm here. I go inside the leg. As I go inside the leg, I'm at the rib cage. Why am I at the rib cage and I'm, I'm not doing the conventional on the back here? Because if I do it on the back, this is what guys do at my level. If I put my hand on the back, they turn on me and they attack the Kimura. Attack the Kimura, Sean? See what I mean? So, knowing that, I don't go on the back anymore. So what I start doing is, I start going to the rib cage. So that way he has no Kimura and I still, able to bring him in by using this knee leverage that I've developed over the years. Okay, so I bring the knee to the shoulder, I'm at the rib cage, now I'm just gonna turn him in. Now I'm at the diff half, let's turn this way. I got the triangle, I got the leg, okay? Watch this leg, I don't want this leg to go over my head. If the guy gets his leg over the head, it becomes a scramble, he's gonna turn into me. And that's usually what happens. Boom, you're not gonna get a sweep. So go back, Sean. Back to half. If I stay trapped tight, get the head over, he's not gonna get the head leg over, okay? Now moving on, we understand the basics of the position. Now what I'm gonna do is, for a slight second, I'm gonna open my legs, and I'm gonna escape my hips back. I'm using my foot, plant it right on the floor, and I'm escaping my hips back. Now, when I skate my hips back, I'll get my knee in, just like so, okay? Now, look at my foot position. Both of my legs are like squeezing his legs in, so it's hard for him to pull the leg. I still with the double on the leg here. Boom, double control on the leg, all right? Tell them, how, is that tight, Sean? Tight, tight, I can't pull this over. I can't get this out, squeezing me tight. 
So my basic sweep that I've been doing for years, guys, and it, it took me a while to come up with this, is from here, I move this foot in right onto his knee, and I push his leg. And as I'm pushing his leg, watch my hand control changing. I open the grip as I push, and I stop planting this elbow on the floor. From the elbow, I go to the hand. Okay, now all I gotta do here to finish the sweep is to come up by bringing this leg back and go on top of him. As I go on top, make sure you control this foot and already have inside control on the leg. The reason why you control this foot is you don't want this foot free. Maybe the guy will pull his arm in, try a triangle or something. I don't want nothing unexpected to happen to me. So I'm right here controlling the guy in good position. Okay, so let's do the whole thing again. Let's see if we can get the same picture. So I'm doing my half. I go in, look at my hand position, guys. Look at my knee. I get deep half. Once I get deep half, let's see if we can turn around so we can see my foot movement. I'm in the deep half. Drop the legs for a slight second. Now look how I move my hips back. And I get my knee in. A lot of guys that I show this have problem with this position because they don't skip their hips. When you're on the body, you gotta escape your hips to position yourself well. So open the legs, kick the hips, get the leg in. Okay, turn the other way. This way. So foot on the floor, escape your hips. I'm right here. Now all you gotta do here, push that foot like you're straining him out, and at the same time, look at me posting up. Now all I gotta do is bring this leg back, come up, control the foot, and you got your first sweep. So moving on with our half guard, we learned our first half guard sweep. Now we're going to start working on uh, variations from the half guard um, that happens th through the match. First one I'm going to show you is the knee bar that I do from there. And it usually happens when guys try to run away from my half guard. Okay? So here's what's going to happen. Let's move this way, Sean. Um, I go for my half guard. We all know how to get deep. Now, as I get deep, what he's going to try to do, he's going to try to run away from me. You know, try to real stand up and try to run. See how he's trying to run? As he runs, he exposes his leg. Okay? So what i got to do now is I want to see the, the, the bottom leg come on around. And I'm placing this foot under his armpit. The reason why I put it on his armpit is because I don't want him trying to enter me. Okay, because I really want to finish the, the, the knee bar here. Now, once I put the foot there immediately, I lock this leg as high as I can, almost on his butt, and I'll lock the triangle right there. Now, as I lock the triangle, I just don't lock the triangle here. I lock the triangle, but I keep the, the leg under his armpit. Now, all I got to do is get a hold of the, the leg, bridge, and I got a knee bar in there. Okay. This position I'm showing real slow motion, but in the match will happen like in two seconds. You know, the guy will try to run away from you, you go straight for the position. So if I go in, he tries to run away, look how I get the legs out right off the bat. So my legs are almost like in the air, but I place that foot there for a slight second. And as I adjust the other leg, just like you were adjusting a triangle, that's my setup right there. I lock it, one, two, and look at the foot right back where he was because I don't want him once again to turn into me and if he turns into me because I was light second he could change the position then we're gonna have to change the finish now from here you can finish the traditional knee bar here or if you want to finish even harder for him just to get underneath your arm and make that bridge right there so make sure the knees pointing down to your stomach just like you do in an arm bar the thumb to the ceiling same concept okay and you hold both hands on the leg, bridge, got the knee bar. If you want to do it, 
even tighter you can do it here or you can even do it the other way and get real tight okay wrap around the leg and the same concept just make a bridge so let's do one more time Sean so I'm here go. So that's the setup that's the leg right there lock it bridge got your finish need the knee bar um, now I'm gonna do in a variation sometimes it happens in a match is like I said I didn't have enough time to put that foot under his armpit so what Sean did is he's gonna turn it into me and I'm gonna switch it for a toe hold okay I do a lot of that too so what I'm gonna do is this way give him a angle I'm gonna go for my half guard sweep try to run away from me I do my move, but as I'm going, he starts turning into me here, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, since I don't have the angle to knee bar him, see how his knee's out? If I try to knee bar here, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna switch this to a toe hold. And the way I'm gonna do this is this. I'm gonna move my body pointing towards his toe. As I move in, look at my left hand, the hand that's pretty much doing nothing here, and that's the hand that was helping me do the knee bar. It's gonna come all the way around. And as it comes all the way around, I pull my right arm out and I go straight to the toe. Okay, go back, grab my arm rest. Now look at me coming back in with the turn and that's really what's gonna catch the guy. I come back turning this way and I apply the pressure. And that's how I'm gonna finish my toe hold. So it's very important that when you go for that knee bar, if you feel like the knee's not straight and you lost it and he's trying to come back into you, you turn and the way you turn is one more time, you're gonna have to use this foot into the guy's body to push yourself so you can move. See how easily I move now? Now all I gotta do here is switch my grips to the toe hold. And when I see people doing toe holds, a lot of times I see guys that are going too high on the foot it's, it's called toe hold for a reason. You're really holding the toes and you're going back to your own uh, wrist here, just like you're doing a rear naked choke. Now, as I get a hold of it, if I try to finish here, there is some pressure, but there's gonna be a lot more pressure if you come back in. And one more time, I'll lock the triangle and I'll finish the guy here, boom. And that's how I finish the toe hold from there. So let's do the whole thing again. So the idea of this is you're going for the knee bar and now he's defending the knee bar by turning his knee. So you're gonna have to adapt and change. So I go for my half, boom, I start working. He turns and look at the knee. I don't have a knee bar here. So right away, I go for the switch. Look how I transition my body. Now I already got a hold of the toe. Now just go back, lock the triangle, finish it up from here. So uh, moving on from our half guard sweeps, what I'm going to do now is a uh, common position I use a lot, okay? So here's what it's going to look like. I'm into half guard position, okay? I go inside the leg. Now what I'm doing is I'm using my foot so I can keep Sean away from me so he doesn't put the weight. And I'm going to turn, use my hand on the floor, forehead on the floor. Now I'm going to roll, as I roll, I'm attacking that knee bar, okay? So as I'm rolling underneath him, I'm straightening this leg out. So let's go back to the half. So instead of doing my traditional half here, I'm gonna go inside the leg, just like the half guard, but now I gotta push those, this foot on his hips. If I don't post the foot on the hip, 
you know? And I go, tr sometimes I go straight, the guy locks me down and I'm in a really bad position. That's why I like to use the foot on the hip first. Because if he tries to put the weight on me, I push him out. And then I can't come back in. Now, as I get here, all I gotta do is do a roll over my shoulder and I'm straight to the knee bar. To do the knee bar, we just do it like we did it from the half guard, okay? It's the triangle, foot uh, 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 underneath the armpit, and I can straight the leg out and finish the guy with the knee bar, okay? So let's do one more time. So as I'm going for the position, turn, I'm roll. He's giving the knee bar, boom. So we, we did the knee bar from there. Now we're gonna get into our series of, uh, I call it the half guard roll sweep. And uh, what's gonna happen here is this. I'm gonna do the same technique, okay? And I'll explain it again. I'll go inside the leg, just like we do in the half guard. I'm defending the guy here, so he doesn't put the weight. Put the foot on the, on the hip for a slight second. I'll turn. Now, as I'm gonna do my roll, I roll, but now, He's not giving up the leg. Look how Sean's triangle to his leg so I don't knee bar him. So what I'm gonna do is, instead of keep fighting, and he, if he stays on top of me, it's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna keep rolling with him, and I'm gonna gain top position. Once you gain top position, what I want you to think about here is to lock the triangle on your own leg and to keep this knee by his butt. So that way you got good control, and later on, I'm gonna show you guys attacks. We got the foot lock, we got the knee, we got the foot lock and the knee bar that we can apply from there. Okay, so let's do one more time, Sean. So this is just another variation from the same move we just learned, but now we're sweeping the guy. So I'm here defending myself. I get into the leg, foot rotation. Boom. I'm gonna roll. Now I roll all the way through. Now once you roll, very important because you don't want to get into a scramble position. And if, you, uh, if I stay too far away from the guy here, and I see guys do this a lot, they drop this knee, and that's the way to defend this, and now you got to go on top right away. So make sure, keep the, the hand inside the leg, lock the triangle, and keep the knee by his butt right here. Now he's real tight, try to move a little bit, Sean. Can't go anywhere, in good position. And later on, we're gonna learn attacks from here. So let's do the sweep one more time. So this is our half guard roll sweep. So I'm here with the guy. roll sweep that's what I call it uh, it's a great move great variation from the half guard um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to finish the match I'm gonna show you guys first uh, uh, foot lock that I use a lot from there okay that's why previously I said how important it is to be in good position once you sweep the guy so we're gonna do the sweep again so let's so go real, real quick the sweep so I go for the sweep I get the I roll I get on top. Remember I talked about how you're supposed to behave with your legs here. Cross the triangle, keep this knee pointing to his butt. So I'm right here. The reason why I do this, now it's hard for Sean to move. Really hard. And every time he tries to move, I'm looking for those, for those legs. So now he's got to be careful because I got the knee bar and I got the foot lock, believe it or not, on this side here. And that's the first thing we're going to attack. Okay? Usually when we get to this position here, guys are worried about the knee bar. 
Because he knows if he opens his leg, I'm going to straight knee bar him from here. So he's not expecting me to attack this foot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the foot, lock it just like so. And as I do that, I move myself back this way. Lock it as tight as I can. Okay. So I go right for the foot lock. One, two. And what I'm going to do now to make matters even worse for him is I'm going to bring this leg over his leg and I'll relock the triangle with his leg here. Try to move a little bit, Sean. Now he has no movement. All I got to do here is arch. I got my finish. It's really hard for him to move. Tell them how hard it is to move. Legs are tangled. I can't turn this. See way. how he can't go anywhere? And I got his foot. So once you get that foot, his chest up to the ceiling, arch, you got your finish. Okay? It all comes from, like I said, having a good setup and being tight with the guy with your legs. Let's do one more time the whole thing. So I go for my sweep. One, two, forehead. Do the roll. Right away I'm here. Now he's worried about the knee bar. Maybe I'll put some pressure. Like make him think that I'm going for the knee bar. I get the leg. Boom. Now once I lock it in, look how I open my leg. I bring it over and I relock it. Just like so. Now try to move anywhere. Can't go anywhere. Now I lock it, arch, I've got the foot lock. Very simple but very tight position. You can catch a lot of people on that. So that's going to be our first series of finishing from the roll, half guard roll sweep. Alright guys, so uh, moving on, so we learned the, the roll, half card roll sweep, going for the foot lock, now uh, what he's going to do, he knows I'm going for the foot, he's going to feel the pressure on the foot, he's going to defend his foot, and we're going to do the, we're going to go base, back to the basic position, which is the knee bar, and that's what I'm going to show you guys right now. So, I'm here with the guy, okay, I'm going for the sweep, I'll sweep him. Now, as I sweep, I get myself into good position, just like I mentioned before, and you're behind the butt, everything. Now, once I start going for that foot, look what he's going to do. He's going to pull that foot away. As he pulls it away, look what's right there. It's the knee bar. Okay, so that's one more time, Sean. So I go for the foot, just like I'm saying. Now, look, the leg's right there to attack. So if he pulls his foot away, defending the foot lock, all I need to do is reach behind his uh, ankle like this, and I got... The knee bar, straight knee bar. And that's usually what people try to do from this position here. Is they try to fight for the knee bar, they want to rip it out, but it's not going to happen that way. There's got to be a distraction and there's got to be an effective move to make the guy give you this leg. And that's why I came up with the foot lock. See, every time I go for the foot, he wants to pull it out. Every time he pulls it out, he gives me the leg. Okay? So grab it like you really got to catch it. If you don't catch it, go back to the knee bar and you can always. Go for the foot, go for the knee bar, he relocks it again, go back for the foot. So you can do this endless until you catch something, either the foot or the knee bar. And if you do go for the knee bar, keep the triangle lock, make sure you position your body, turn yourself into that knee, so that knee is pointing to my stomach. One more time. If he turns his leg sideways, now here I don't have anything. You're gonna, you're gonna put yourself into a, a scramble situation. So you wanna make sure if the knee's turning out, or whatever way he's turning that knee, you want to make sure that knee's pointing into you, so you can catch the knee bar. So that's going to be our variation from there. So you got the foot lock, and you got the knee bar, depending how he reacts. You know, every, everybody's going to react different, so I'm just giving you guys a, a lot of options there.
guys. So uh, going back to the half guard roll sweep, what I'm going to do now is uh, instead of attacking the foot, let's say the guy defends the foot, he defends the knee bar, and I'm going to show how he's going to defend it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to saddle for the sweep, and I'm going to gain uh, uh, control of the half guard. Okay? So here's how we're going to do this. <clears throat> I'm gonna go for my sweep, okay? And as I sweep him, what happened a lot of times is as I'm setting myself in, he drops his knee too much. So I don't have time to properly set up on the guy, okay? So what I wanna do now is I still wanna stay on top and I wanna get my sweep. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna switch hands control his leg for a sec because I don't want to just lose control of the legs and then he can't go back on top of me. So go back Sean. So I'm here. I'm going to switch control and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my right hand and I'm going to pummel this arm. Just place the hand on the floor right now. Okay. So I was here. He's dropping the knee. He's not letting me get the leg in. So right off the bat I know I'm not going to be able to full lock or knee bar. He's already defending that. So I switch hands I'm right here. Now the hand that's holding the leg is going to go on top of his knee because what I want to do is I want to move all the way around, step around, and I want to gain half guard on the guy. Okay? The reason why as I'm going I place this hand on this knee is if I don't place the hand on the knee and I try to go around, he might place me on full guard. He might lift this leg and I'll look at it. I'm back to full guard. I don't want to go back to full guard. I like playing on top from the half guard a lot. So initially I was here. So I switched the grips, boom, just to hold him down so he doesn't go on top of me. Okay, try to go on top strong. Very hard. Now my hand, it's on the floor because as I spin, look how I'm posting my foot too. I switch my foot. I'm ready to spin to go to the other side. I'm already controlling this leg. Now as I spin, I step. Now look where my head goes. My head goes on the side of his hips. And look at my knee. Turn it in. Boom. Now I'm in great position here. Just got my sweep. And then I can't stop attacking the half guard. Can get my lockdown. Start getting my pass. Okay. So let's do it one more time. So I go for the sweep. I sweep. Don't gain control, switch the hand right away. I feel I don't have it, switch the hand, pummel the arm. The reason why I pummel the arm, back Sean, is if you don't pummel this arm and you stay like this and you come around, it's gonna go to your back, take your back. That's why before you go, you wanna make sure that you post this hand right under his arm because as you swing around, then he can control the guy and stay on top. Okay? Alright guys, moving on, um, we're going to do the half guard roll sweep now, so position we call the 50-50, it's been used by everybody pretty much, and uh, that's the way, one of the ways I like to get to the 50-50 is using the sweep, okay, and here's what's going to happen, um, I'm going to start my sweep, <clears throat> and as I start my sweep, I go to sweep Sean, and he posts the hand on the floor, Okay, so now I'm not able to complete my, uh, my sweep because he's posting, he's defending the sweep, okay? And right off the bat, he turns into me, not giving out the leg. Now we end up on this position. Now right off the bat, what I wanna do is, I don't wanna keep this foot on the outside here because now he can attack the foot. I wanna bring the leg, cross the triangle, keep every tight, everything tight. Now, 
instead of letting Sean place the leg on this side and get on 50-50 on me, what I want to do is I want to keep this leg on this side. So now the only person that is exposed for foot locks is him. Okay? Try to bring the leg across Sean. See how he can. And if he tries to attack my foot here, it's going to be really difficult because always, he's always going to be more exposed than me. Now if he brings the leg in, now we're in the 50-50 position. So this is kind of a half 50-50 because I'm, I'm in more control than him. You know, that's the, mo the worst mistake I see guys do is when they go to 50-50, they let the guy bring this leg across. And that's, that's what you're supposed to do. But we, we know the guy's gonna do that. So as he tries to bring this leg, I'll keep this leg on this side. So now I'm trapping his foot here. Okay, so let's do the movement a little time, Sean. So I'm gonna go for my sweep. Use the foot, use the roll sweep. As I roll, he pulses on the floor. Immediately, he turns into me, boom. So now I'm here. Look how I'm holding the foot. If the guy does stand up, let's say he stand up on me, there you go. And I'm here, what you wanna do, you don't, you don't wanna be in this kind of position here, because it's harder for you. So what you wanna do is you wanna bridge. And look, as I bridge, I'll bring him down. Now I'm in a much better position than him, okay? Let's do one more time, Sean. Let's do what you're standing now all the time, because that's most of the time that's what's gonna happen. The guy's gonna stand on you. Um, so you go for the sweep, boom. He defends it, he turns into you. Now I'm right here, okay? Now don't stay here, here. If he could attack this foot, that's why I keep it down. Look how I'm keeping my foot down. If I keep it here, he could go for a foot lock or, or, or different things here. So here, don't want to stay here too long. Just bridge on the guy. Use your hips up to take him down. Keep a hold of this leg. You cannot bridge the guy, take him down, and let this leg free. Now he goes to 50-50. And like I said, the position, uh, you know, the name or it tells everything, it's 50-50 chance where you're gonna sweep or you're gonna get tapped or you're gonna tap the guy. I don't like to put myself into those positions. That's why I've been using this a lot. I keep a hold of the leg. I don't let him bring this leg across. Now I'm in a more advantage position here. Okay, that's one more time, Sean. roll sweep going for the 50 50 let's call it 50 50 but uh it's not really a 50 50 situation because i'm putting yourself in a better position than your opponent all right so now i'm going to show you guys a finish from there this is what i'm going to do the same sweep same setup everything um as i go for the position he defends i lock he's standing now Pay attention to one, uh, one thing I didn't mention is this hand is inside, just like you do in the half guard. Now make that bridge, he comes down on you, okay? Now what I wanna do here, let's turn this way, Sean. It's very important, this right leg, to stay by his butt, okay? Because if I keep this leg out, like I said, he could try to foot lock you. It's not gonna be easy for him to finish you from here, but it's a possibility, and I, want, I don't want that possibility, so. I want to keep it here and I'll try to get it, Sean. Now it's much harder. It's harder for him to heel hook. Even if he tries to go for a heel hook there, it's going to be almost impossible to reach for that. That's why I'm bringing this leg all the way to the butt, okay? Now, first position we're going to do from here is a straight uh, uh, ankle lock. So I'm going to wrap around the foot. And as I wrap around it, I like to do here is hold hand with hand on this case, okay? Because my arms are short, <laughs> kind of thick. so. I go around, I get the foot. Now from here, I could try to finish him. There is some sort of pressure, but if I start turning and I put my forehead on the floor, 
Now it's going to be much easier for me to finish him here because now I can really arch and get the finishing hole. So what you want to do is hide the foot. I get his own foot lock. And another detail I like to use too, guys, is to avoid the guy from coming into you to try to get your head. Get my head, Sean, to the fence. See how he's trying to get my head? Look where my knee is. My knee's on the outside. I want to keep this knee out to his chest. So now it's harder for him to come up on top of me to defend himself, okay? So if he tries to come on top now, much harder. Now if I keep the knee here, then what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to push him down again and come back with the knee. So you wanna make sure you keep that knee there. Now once I'm here, now I get that foot. Once I get a hold of that foot, I'll start turning. Start turning. Now if you look at my legs, I had the triangle, but as I go for the finish, I kind of open my legs up, locking the guard onto the foot, just like so. Try to keep it short as well, but as I turn, forehand on the floor, stop bridging, and you have your finish there, okay? So a couple important things here. The knee, and as you go for the finish, look at me straighten those legs out just a tiny bit. You don't want to do it too much so he can lock your legs here either. You know, it's just a tiny bit as I'm going because I do want to straighten my body out as much as I can. And the forehand on the floor is very important. I see a lot of guys trying to finish the guy here. I mean, some guys would tap if they have weak foot, but some guys, man, you got you to gotta get it perfect. So here, it's one pressure. Tell them, Sean. See, you still feel a little bit of pressure. There's pressure, but there you Once can drive I your turn. hips. Use your head. Man. That's how you really finish this position here. All right, so make sure knee and as you're rolling you got this control kind of straight the legs out forehand on the floor and make that bridge when I mean bridge is you bring your hips up that's the bridge you know so you your hips come up and you put that pressure onto the guy's foot and that's how you effectively you're gonna finish this guy here same technique but now we're gonna finish the guy with the heel hook uh, it's a technique I don't like to do when I train a lot because uh, uh, the heel hook you always hurt someone you know because the guy doesn't have enough time to tap but it's a position that's out there some tournaments are legal some tournaments are illegal IBJJF doesn't let you do heel hooks for a reason like I said if you go real hard on your partner he's not gonna have enough time to tap and you're just gonna tear the ligaments on his knee but uh, 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 I want to make this a complete DVD series, so I will show you guys how to do it. So one more time, <clears throat> we go back to the same position. Um, go for the roll sweep, boom, to your fence. I'm almost in 50-50 position, like I said, it's not a completely 50-50, okay? So I, I sweep the guy. Now what I'm gonna do, what's gonna happen here is, I'm gonna try to go for the straight ankle lock, but he starts turning his knee like he wants to run away from me. Now what he does is he exposes the heel hook. How am I going to get the heel hook? I'm going to wrap around his foot just like so here okay now the problem here is this if I stay with the triangle the way it is and I try to heel hook him I could catch a couple guys and he's feeling right on the knee Sean I'm going to go real slow he's going to feel it here okay but most guys what they're going to do is I start as I start cranking on the heel hook, he's gonna start rotating to the fan. And that's the right way to do it. So what I'm gonna, we're gonna have to do here is, once we go for the heel hook, I'm gonna have to change my leg position. So let's go back, show him this way, this way. So look how my triangle is, all right? Now, if I'm gonna go for the heel hook, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna bring this leg in, and I'm gonna lock both legs underneath his leg. Now try to spin. Now he's not going to spin anywhere. Okay? So that way, 
there's no escape. <laughs> That's why I don't like this move. He's completely, he can't move from here, you know. The only way for him to get out is either to tap or I'm going to blow up his knee, okay. So that's the variation we need to, to work on. It's moving those legs. As you go for the heel hook, as he's turning to defend, you bring both legs in. Look how my bottom leg is hooking this leg, and I come underneath, hooking the same leg. Now everything gets tight. Tell them, show how tight this is. Especially with my knees in the pocket. If I it's already, you're already feeling pressure, right? Man, now if I add any pressure here, and all I'm doing with the heel is I'm turning it, bringing it in, like so, okay? So once you get this, all you need to do is bring it in slowly. It's a hard position to do because even if you're training with a partner, let's say I'm sparring with Sean, I get to that position. If I crank it a little bit hard, I could take him out of tr a practice for a month, two months, you know? But it's a good position to finish. Um, Abu Dhabi, a lot of people were doing this, so uh, good to know. So understand the lag position. If you stay, <clears throat> Let's go back to this bit. If you stay here and you try to heel hook the guy from here, he's gonna roll. He's gonna keep rolling. Okay, go back. That's why when I do the heel hook, as soon as I start going for it, I'm already switch. Look how I switch my legs. Now both legs are in. Turn this way a little bit, Sean. Both legs are in, just like so. Now he's not going anywhere. Then you can easily finish your heel hook from there. And when you finish the heel hook, Wrap around the heel, whole heel, lock hand with hand, and you just turn it in. Boom, you got your finish. Good moves on the half guard roll sweeps. We got finishes, we got sweeps. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over a couple pointers of uh, different techniques that could happen on this particular situation. I just want you guys to be prepared. Like, like I said, you want to be always ahead of your opponent. So if you already know what he's gonna do and that situation happens, you already prepare, nothing's gonna happen. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a reset. So what's gonna happen is this. First situation is, I'm gonna go for my sweep. As I go for my sweep, I make a mistake or whatever and the guy locks me down. Boom, he locks hand me hand. Look what he just did here. Now if I stay here, and I, I, I stay here for too long, what he's gonna do, he's gonna lock hand me hand, he's gonna sprawl, and look where he's at. He's right at my back. So understand this, you cannot let the guy lock your head in that particular situation, okay? So, when I get to the position here, I feel his hand coming in to lock me down. Right off the bat, I'm already rolling. Because if I stay there for too long and I let him, give him time to react, he's gonna go for the lockdown. Especially if you're going against bigger opponents, they will lock you down and they're gonna put you in a bad position, okay? So before he locks me down, all you gotta do, he goes for the lockdown, I roll, boom. There's no way he's gonna know. Now from here, I gave you guys plenty of moves to work on depending on his reaction. We got the knee bar, we got the foot lock, we got the 50-50 variations, we got the sweep, different things we can do from there. So the first, worst mistake you can do in this position is uh, letting the guy lock you down. Because if he locks you down, you're gonna be in trouble. Okay, so one more time. See a lot of this happen, I show this move, guys get the leg and just sit here. Now the guy locks me down, hand with hand, he sprawls on me, now look where he's at. Now I can turn or whatever, but I'm in a horrible position here. So we need to be effective with that roll. I get the leg, I feel this guy coming in to try to hug me, it's a perfect position, perfect timing to roll and to start your attacks, okay? So I want you guys to think about this. You know, that's why it's good to drill this move over and over and over again. You know, but uh, uh, if you feel that guy coming in to try to lock you down, immediately you gotta roll. Roll, and then from there, we have all the, the different positions that we learned, and then we can attack the car accordingly to whatever, you know, his reaction is. So make sure you understand that.
All right, guys, so uh, moving on. We're going to go to a different situation now. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I train with the same guys all the time. They're really good. They pick up my, my game quick. They start using my moves, and then they start reacting, defending my moves. So I'm always expecting them to defend, and I'm always ready to react as they defend. So what we're going to do now, with that in mind, is I'm going to go for the leg. And as I go for the leg, as I'm going, what Sean's going to do now, he's going to sprawl, and I lose control of the leg. You know, that happens to me sometimes because I get a guy, and I'm doing the same move over weeks. He's going to know how to react. He knows if I get a hold of his leg, I'm going to have a different game in there, and different techniques that I can roll, either sweep him or finish him. Okay? So what he's doing now, he's sprawling on me, and I'm losing control of the leg. If you lose the leg, you're going to have to bail and go back into guard again. So what I'm going to do is, sure. give me the leg. I kind of get the leg, but he sprawls. But when he sprawls, I don't have the leg anymore. So right away, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn my neck, and I'm going to roll, and I go back into guard again. Right away. I don't sit there. I don't wait for him to react. I lost the leg. I know I don't have control of anything. I just want to go back into the game, reset everything, and then either start with the half guard sweep or start attacking the, the, the half guard leg uh, sweep again. Okay? So one more time. So I go for the leg. He sprawls and I lose the leg. Right away I come back. So what you're doing is, you here on this position, turn your neck, come with this hand in, just like you're doing a front row. If you're a beginner, that's how you do a front row, okay? And you, you wanna use your whole body to come back in. So that way, if he's putting weight onto you, you can push him out with your body. So Sean, um, let me get the leg, so you guys can see this. I lose the leg, now he starts putting weight on me. So what I want to do is I want to roll. As I roll, another thing that I watch for, you really got to open up this leg. Because if you don't open this leg that much, you might get stuck here, in this situation. And then he can go straight to side mount. Okay? So let's do that. I'm not going to open the leg as much. So I'm here. I lose the leg. I'm not going to open the leg. Look where I'm at. He's in side control. That's when you come back. To replace the guard, you want to roll and open that. Now see, I'm already set up for the half guard that we did earlier. And then I can reset the whole game again. Control, control, leg, different positions here. So just be aware of that. Quick reaction. That's all we all need. That's the difference between a white belt and a black belt. We react a lot faster than the beginners because uh, we've been doing this for so long. And what I'm trying to do on this DVD it gives you, teach you guys the proper reaction. It might take you a couple months, but knowing what you're supposed to do within a few months of, of drilling and, and, and finding the mistakes you make, you'll be able to fix it because not you know what you to look for. So, quick reaction, guys. That's the key of the game.